from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. How many know that God is worthy of all of our praise? That means there's never a bad time to praise the Lord. There's never a moment when the praise of the Almighty God needs to cease. Paul said it best. Paul said that I would, that, that, that it's a good thing that we praise the Lord at all times. He said, Paul said it this, Paul said it this way. He said, he said we need to, to bless the Lord, to thank him at all times. He said continually we need to bless the Lord. And so our time of praise and thanksgiving shouldn't just result around the end of November. It shouldn't happen just when you're sitting around a table full of food. It should happen at all times. David said, bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall do what? Continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord, everyone joining us online. Praise God for you coming out this morning to worship the Lord with us here this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I tell you, God is a promise keeper. God promised that he would never leave us nor forsake you. I want you to know today, in spite of what you're going through, God is with you. And that should be encouraging somebody here this morning. No matter what you're going through, God is here. God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He promised in his word that he'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. The enemy's job is to make you feel like you're all alone. The enemy's job is to make you feel like all hope is lost. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In other words, the thief's job is to steal. But the Lord's job is to give. The thief wants to steal your joy, wants to take away your peace, wants to sap all of your strength. But God wants to give you that abundant life that he talked about there in the word of God. That life that is full of goodness, that life that is full of his grace, full of his mercy, a blessed life. How many are ready for the word of God? Hallelujah. Turn with me in the word of God. Turn with me to Matthew chapter number 7. I want you to know that you are blessed this morning and the devil can't do anything about it. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 1. In these scriptures we read part of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 1. We're going to read down to verse number 8. We stand in reverence to the Word of God because the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet, the light unto our pathway. Matthew 7, verse number 1 says, Judge not that ye be not judged. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote in thine eye, and behold, a beam is then thine own eye, thou hypocrite. I'll read that part again. <laughs> thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Yes. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. 
Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You may be seated in the house of God. Amen. In these scriptures, we read part of the Sermon on the Mount. Many consider the Sermon on the Mount one of the greatest sermons, if not the greatest sermon that has ever been preached. The Sermon on the Mount is the longest uninterrupted time in which we find Jesus speaking in Scripture. It spans from Matthew chapter number 7 to Matthew chapter, um, Matthew chapter number 5 to Matthew chapter number 7. It talks about righteousness. It talks about compassion. It talks about justice. It talks about forgiveness. It talks about mercy. It talks about all, uh, uh, the, way, the, all the ways in which we are to, to strive to live our lives as the people of God. In the verses we read today... It talks about the fact that in this life we are called to practice uh, being genuine and not being a, a hypocrite. Uh, I want to, to use as a subject this morning, practice what you preach. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I need you to practice what you preach. <laughs> I heard an old pastor by the name of Barry White say. <laughs> Some of you might be familiar with Barry White. Sure you're right. <laughs> Wrote a song that said, practice what you preach. Song went a little bit like this. I'm not about to sing it, but he said, Call you keep telling me this you keep telling me that you say once I'm with you and I'll never go back you say there's a lesson that I want to teach well here I am baby but practice y'all about to finish it for me because y'all practice what you preach what I'm talking about this morning is maybe not be the same as what Barry White was talking about. But he was talking about hypocrisy. In, in essence, uh, hypocrisy refers to the act of claiming to believe something but not acting, in, but, but acting in a different manner. It is a person that pretends to have virtues and values and principles in one setting, but in other settings, they act as if they don't have any of those things. Uh, back when I was younger, we used to call some people two-faced. You, you, you act one way when you're with me, but behind my back, you're acting completely different. Now, now you got all kinds of things to say about me. Now you got all kinds of things to say about other people. They acted one way when they were with you, but another way behind your back. That word hypocrite is derived from the Greek term actor. The word hypocrite comes from the Greek word to, that means actor. Literally, somebody who wears a mask. Somebody who pretends to be something that they are not. The Bible talks about hypocrisy as a sin. We talk a lot about sins in the body of Christ. We talk about uh, uh, th this type of sin, drugs and alcohol. We talk about this kind of sin, promiscuity. We talk about this kind of sin, that kind of sin. But we seem to always leave out hypocrisy. There are two different forms of hypocrisy. One that consists of professing belief in something and then acting in a manner that is contrary to that belief. Another way of, of looking at hypocrisy is looking down on others when we ourselves are flawed. Hmm. And I'm here to tell you today that whether you are doing the first one or whether you are doing the second one, whether you are professing Christ on Sunday and living another way on Monday, whether you are looking down your nose at other people, all of us are flawed. Reality check. I just got to let you know that. You can, you, now you, you, can, you, you can check out if you want to, but all of us are flawed. The, 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 book of, the, the, the Word of God says in Romans chapter number 3, 23, that says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. 
are flawed. Uh, somebody say all of us are flawed. Uh, I say that to say don't be a hypocrite. We are all flawed. Yes, many of us are saved. Yes, many of us are changed. We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We're forgiven, fire baptized. But in spite of the salvation, in spite of, of, of our redemption, in spite of our forgiveness, we are all flawed. Because of that flaw being, uh, being called being human, uh, we run the risk of, uh, of every now and then being a hypocrite. How many want to admit that I've been a hypocrite? Oh, I didn't think I, I didn't think I was gonna get that many hands. Was, people started looking around. Uh, <laughs> if we're being honest, uh, Matthew chapter number seven, verse number one says, "Judge not that ye be not judged. For that for what with uh, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with that measure ye meet, and it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye? But consider if not the beam that is in your own eye. Why are you talking about uh, the, 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 uh, the, the speck that is in somebody else's eye, the splinter that is in somebody else's eye when you got a two by four? Stuck in your own. The trunk of a tree. Stuck in your own. Uh, here, Jesus is instructing us that if, if we judge other people, we're going to be measured by and with the same measuring stick. And so all of you self-righteous Christians that love to go around looking your nose down at other people, your day is coming. That's what Jesus is saying. Uh, all of you people that claim to be perfect, you want to walk around with your clergy collar on, you want to walk around like a holier than thou, you want to walk around with your church hat cocked to the side, you want to walk around with your church dress on, you want to walk around with your gold cross on. He said, your day is coming. He said, he said yeah, yeah, yeah. the same measuring stick that you're trying to measure everybody else on, the same thing that you're going to be measured on. All of you that want to point out everybody else's flaws, but turn a blind eye to your own. Yeah, your day is, is coming. Romans 3 and 10 says this, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Every one of us is flawed. From the pulpit to the door, from the cradle to the grave, we're all flawed. But in spite of our flaws, God has extended his grace toward you and I. I'm so glad that he keeps his eye upon the sparrow, that he looks beyond all of our faults and he sees all of our areas of need. And all of our areas of need, we got a whole lot of needs. Uh, but I'm so, I'm so glad that God sees beyond our faults and sees our areas of need. Hypocrites are not anything new. Goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. Runs throughout the Old Testament. Isaiah 29, 13 says, The Lord said, These people come near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made, me only, is made up only of rules taught by men. Anybody know any hypocrites? Y'all thinking of them now. You, yeah, yeah. Don't look around. Don't look around. Though. Yeah. The thing about hypocrisy is that most of us can point it out. Most of us can tell you that person's being a hypocrite. Uh, most of us are able to point it out, but most of us, if we're honest, don't want to point it out in ourselves. If we're really being honest, there are times when all of us have to say, I'm being a hypocrite. I'm saying one thing and doing another. But in spite of my ways, and, and, and I can always turn to Jesus. In spite of my flaws, I can always turn to Jesus. In spite of all of my mistakes, I can always turn to my, to, 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 to my God. In spite of all of my ups and downs, I can always turn to Jesus. In spite of uh, the times in which I say, just like the, like the disciples said, Lord, I'm with you every step of the way. And when it comes to push, come to shove, there I am, just like Peter. I don't know the man. 
acting as, as though I've never met Jesus, acting as though I've never uh, been in contact with the Savior. Matthew chapter number 7, verses number 3 through 5 says, And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye? But consider if not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote in thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! First cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. What that tells me is that there, if, if there is any help, if there is any deliverance, we need to recognize that self-evaluation is necessary. In other words, from time to time, all of us need to take a long look in the mirror. I've been talking about Barry White all way, all already, but now I need to talk about Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm going to ask him to change his ways. I'm going to start with me first. One of the greatest witnesses is when you look in the mirror and when you can testify to the sinner that if it wasn't for the grace of God, one of the greatest witnesses is when you can look in the mirror and say, I'm flawed, but my God loves me so much that he died on an old rugged cross. One of the greatest witnesses is the fact I can look at my flaws in the mirror and say, God, you, you, you still love me in spite of my flaws. You're still able to use me in spite of my flaws. You're still blessing me in spite of my flaws. I got to start with me. There, there are many Sundays that people... Uh, uh, they, they come up to me after service and they say, man, you sure did preach that message, but you, you were preaching directly to me. And, I always, and many times I, I turn to them and I say, no, no, I was preaching to me. If you can't apply the word of God to yourself first, how are you going to tell everybody else how to live? If you're not living according to the scriptures, uh, self-evaluation doesn't start with all the people that you don't like. Self-evaluation doesn't start with all of your exes. Self-evaluation doesn't start with all the people that get on your last nerve. Uh, it starts with you. Somebody turn to your neighbor and tell them, it starts with you. Uh, we're good at that. We're, we're good at telling somebody else it starts with you. But, uh, why don't you look at yourself and say it starts with me? Self-evaluation starts. It starts with me. Ah, uh, if we're being honest, if we're being consistent, if we want to change, if we want to do the right thing, it starts with me. It starts with me if I want to live according to the Word of God. It starts with me. It starts with me if I want to dedicate myself to serving the Lord. It starts with me. If I, it doesn't matter how, uh, how what, what the religious leaders do. It doesn't matter what you see the, tele, uh, the televangelists do. It doesn't matter what you see the pastors or the teachers do. It it doesn't matter what the prophets say. Uh, Jesus warned about the dangers of hypocrisy uh, when he talked about the scribes and the Pharisees. Uh, Matthew chapter number 23, verse number 1, Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, uh, so they must be careful to do everything they tell you, uh, but, do not, but, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. I didn't say it the Bible said it. Barry wasn't the first one to say it. Jesus said, Jesus said they don't practice what they preach. 
He said that's what the, he said the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, he said they don't practice what they teach. He said you got to be careful. Uh, that's why I always use so much scripture. Uh, I want you to write down what you're hearing uh, and go back into the word of God and begin to read it for yourself. Uh, Jesus said you got to be careful not, not to do everything that they tell you to do. You got to look into the word of God and read it and study it for yourself. Uh, study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of God. Uh, open up the Bible. It is uh, and That was back in uh, the, the, the medieval days. Uh, that was back in the olden times uh, uh, where the, the, the preacher or the priest would stand and they would read the scripture in Greek. Or they would stand and read the scripture in Hebrew. And everybody would stand there waiting to hear after they finished reading what the interpretation is. You got a Bible that's in English. Open up your word and begin to read it. Open up your word and begin to apply it to your life. And then Jesus went on to say later in that chapter, Matthew number, chapter number 23, verse number 13, he, says unto this, he, said to, he said this, he said, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, he said, for you shut up in the kingdom of heaven against, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer ye them that they are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses for a pretense making long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye come past seas and land to, to, to make uh, one proselyte and when he is, he is made you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you ye blind guides which say whosoever shall swear by the temple it is nothing but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind for whether is great was a wither is great uh, the gold or the temple that sacrifices the gold. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to need to, you to pay attention every time you hear the word woe in Scripture. When you hear the word woe in Scripture, it's not talking about a horse. Like, hey, slow down. Woe, is, woe is, is, a, is a word that means grief and anguish and affliction and trouble. Woe is a message of, of sadness and suffering. It's a, it's a warning of rebellion. When God used the word woe against evildoers, he said, sets divine judgment in motion. But let me also tell you this. Woe can also be uh, uh, the road to healing and deliverance. Job understood that sin leads to woe. He said in Job chapter number 10, verse number 15, he said, I am, he said, if I am guilty, woe is me. That's what Job said. Job said, I got some problems. Job said, I've got some afflictions. So Job said, I got boils all over my body. Job said, I've lost everything, and I've got, I'm surrounded by people that are pointing their finger at me and telling me all the things that I have done wrong and the things that they think I have done wrong. Job looked up and was doing a self-evaluation. Sometimes we got to stop and look at ourselves in the mirror and say, if I uh, am guilty, uh, woe is me. If I'm uh, Lord, Lord if, 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 I, if, if I got to suffer by the things that I have done, woe is me. And so, we, and so that's what Job said. Any, anybody in here ever looked up and ever recognized that I'm far from where I need to be? Some people need to be doing that here this morning. Every time we step into the sanctuary, every time that we get down on our knees, every time we turn to Jesus, we should always stop and pause and look at ourselves and say, man, am I where I need to be? I want you to, under, I want you to ask yourself that question here this morning. Are you where you need to be? Are you where you need to be with God? Even the prodigal son, in the midst of the mud and the mire, in the midst of despair, he had spent everything he had. He had left uh, the, the, uh, the, the wonderful uh, estate of his father. Uh, he had left everything that he held dear, and he found himself destitute and in the mud, uh, hanging out with the pigs, trying to find something to eat. Uh, even the, the, the prodigal son was able to recognize, uh, I don't have to stay here. I know that I can go a place 
Listen, where my heavenly Father is merciful, I, I know that I can go a place where I am able to be restored. I know that I can go someplace that in spite of my flaws, they will still love me. In spite of all of my mistakes, they still love me. In spite of all of my hang-ups, they still love me. The prodigal son looked up. Uh, somebody turn to your neighbor and tell him to look up. Uh, Luke chapter number 15, verse number 17 says, and when he came to himself. Uh, sometimes we need to snap out of it uh, and come to ourselves. Uh, Luke 15 and 17 says, and when he came to himself, uh, he said, how many hired servants of my father's uh, have bread enough to spare, uh, and I perish with hunger. Uh, I will arise and go to my father's, uh, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. In other words, we need to come to ourselves, snap out of it and repent. Snap out of it and look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Snap out of it and look to the one that can come to our, to our rescue. Look to the one who is our redeemer. Look to the one that is our deliverer. He said, I am no longer worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. In the midst of self-evaluation, we have to do a spiritual checkup. We can always consult the Word of God for a spiritual checkup. Uh, every time we open up the Word of God, it begins to not only speak uh, uh, about you, uh, it not only begins to speak about God, uh, but it also begins to speak to you. Uh, it not only speaks about you, but it speaks to you. Uh, the Word of God can speak to you. Uh, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, it is God-breathed. Uh, it's directly from the mouth of God. Uh, and when you open up the Word and begin to read the Word of God, uh, it can speak strength to where there is weakness. Uh, it can speak healing to where there is disorder. Uh, it can speak healing to where there is sickness. Uh, healing where there is affliction. In the Word of God, uh, you'll find answers to your problems. Uh, you'll find answers to your solutions. You'll find answers to your confusion. And when I look at myself through the lens of God's Word, uh, I come to understand that although I, I, have, I, I have accepted Christ, uh, I still have a ways to go. Uh, the Word of God lets us know uh, that once we accept Jesus Christ, uh, that is not the end of the deal. Uh, that is not the end of all things. And now all i got to do is just sit and rest on my morals uh, uh, for all the rest of eternity. Uh, no, I still need to grow in God. Uh, Paul said that he, uh, even though Paul had, had accomplished such great things. Paul said, I still need to press toward the mark for the prize of his high calling. I still need to grow in God. The Word of God lets us know that you can't just get by just on the milk of the Word, but you got to also get into the meat of the Word. The, words of God, the Word of God lets us know that we also need to eat the whole row. I still need to grow in God. Hypocrites act like they got it all together, but children of God, real children of God that are honest with themselves and honest with your God, God, you will look to him for help. There's a song that, 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 that I heard uh, Mother Overstreet sing. She said, all of my help. Uh, it comes from the Lord. A real child of God understands that I can do nothing for myself. I can do nothing by myself. But all of my help. Uh, it comes... It comes from the Lord. Uh, the song says, one day, one day I was living in sin. Jesus reached down and he took me in. He filled my soul with love and then he wrote my name above. He said, oh, uh, my help, it comes from the Lord. I didn't get here by myself. I didn't get to where I am by myself. It's all because of the grace and the mercy of God. All of my help. David said, I will look to the hills for with cometh my help. All of my help. Uh, I'm downtrodden, sick in my body, unsure of where to turn. Don't know which way I'm going to, to turn. Don't, don't know where my help comes from. David said, you can always look up. And so my job is not to act like I got it all together, because I don't. My job is not to act like the road is always smooth, because it's not. 
My job is not to act like my pockets are always full because they are not. My job is to depend. That's the old song that says, I'm learning how to lean and depend on Jesus. Because I found out something along this journey. I found out that if I trust him, he will provide. Uh, I don't know how many got that same testimony here this morning. How many got that same testimony that I... If you trust him, he'll give you enough peace. If you trust him... He'll give you just a little make of old grace. If you trust him, he'll give you just a little bit more mercy. If you trust him, he'll give you just a little bit more strength. You might be ready, ready to, willing and ready to throw in the towel. But if you trust him, he will. He will provide. Don't waste this life doubting. Don't waste this life in fear. Don't wait this, don't waste this life thinking about all the things that could be. Turn your mind to Jesus. Look to him. My job is to serve the Lord. Your job is to serve the Lord. Your job is to look to him. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 6 says this, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again to rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. The last thing I want you to share with you this morning Morning, is that your actions speak louder than your words. Uh, if you want to be uh, a true saint of God, your actions need to speak louder than your words. Uh, you got to practice what you preach. Uh, pre people in God's church uh, must lead by example. Uh, the world is watching. Uh, the children are watching. Uh, the young people are watching. Uh, the sinner is watching. Uh, we've got to be careful not to become hypocrites. We got to be careful not to be hypocrites. What we say has got to line up with the Word of God. And what we do has got to line up with the Word of God. Uh, God never said he wanted you to or needed you to be perfect, uh, but, we, but we should be striving to. Uh, God never said that we would always do the right thing, uh, but we should be striving to. Uh, God never said that we'd all should, we should always think the right thing, uh, but we should be striving to. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober, hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you, but to the revelation of of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but he, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am I'm a holy. It doesn't say it's impossible to be holy. It says that you need to strive to be holy as he is holy. Listen to people of God. We don't need any more hypocrites in this world. We got enough of them. Look around you. We got enough of them. Ah, uh, you look at if you turn on the news, you see hypocrisy. Uh, if you look in celebrity culture, you'll see hypocrisy. Uh, if you look in social media, you will see hypocrisy. Uh, you'll see them in the government. Uh, you'll see them in business. Uh, you'll see hypocrisy. Uh, what we are being fed is false advertisement. Uh, we're being fed propaganda. Uh, listen, everything that glitters is not gold. Uh, just because it looks good, sounds good, feel good, doesn't mean that it's good for you. Uh, we don't need any more fake preachers. Uh, we don't need any more fake saints of God. We don't need any more fake people talking about they got it all, they got this and they got that. If they got it like that, they don't got to flaunt it. Just because you got it. Matter of fact, let me, let me hold on. Let me, let me stop. The richest people don't have to floss what they got. That's what people who don't have try to do, to floss and say, I got it. 
But if you truly got it, you don't got to go around and tell everybody and show everybody. All you got to do is just be you. Wait a minute, let me turn, let me change that from the natural to the spiritual. If you really got the Holy Ghost, if you really feel with the power of God, you don't got to go around beating other people in the head with the Bible. All you got to do is be yourself and the spirit of the living God will flow out of you. Uh, we need more people. Not fake Christians. We need more people that are sold out. Ah, that's what we need. We need more people that will say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. We need more real people that will stand up for Christ even when it's unpopular. People that will stand on the word of God even when it's contrary to what the government says. People that will stand up on the word of God even when it's contrary to popular opinion. Even when it's contrary to LGBTQ. Even when it's popular to whatever segment of society uh, that is saying this is wrong and that is wrong. We got to stand. We need some people of God uh, that will stand on the word of God and say, "Thus saith the Lord." This is what the word says. People I will stand on the word of God, even if it means it might affect your business, uh, even if it means it might affect your promotion, uh, even when it means uh, it might affect uh, your relationship with your co-workers, uh, your relationship with your neighbors, uh, you still uh, have to stand on the word of God. Uh, people that will tell the truth of God's word, uh, will the real saints of God uh, please stand up? Uh, that's in, uh, please stand up. Uh, please stand up. Uh, will the real... Uh, that's not just for Slim Shady, Elder Reed. Uh, that's for the saints of God. Uh, when will the saints of God, uh, when will Christ church, uh, when will the body of Christ stand up and declare what thus saith the Lord? Stand up and speak God's word uh, in season and out of season. Uh, stand up and speak God's word uh, when everything in you is telling you to sit down, uh, but the Holy Spirit in you tells you to stand up. Stand up and speak God's word. It's not only that, but stand up and live God's word. Don't just stand up and speak up, but stand up and live God's word. Ah, your actions speak louder than your words. That means that we have to love the unlovable. Uh, that means that there are some people that need the love of God that nobody wants to touch with a 10-foot pole. But we still got to love them. We still got to love them. Our actions need to speak louder than our words. Many times they may never hear what you got to say, but they will always remember how you made them feel. I didn't make that up. That's Maya Angelou. Uh, we got to understand that we got to love the unlovable. We got to forgive those that hurt us. Don't just pretend to love them. Don't just pretend to forgive them. Love them anyway. I heard Apostle Lada say many times, love the devil out of them. <laughs> Romans chapter number 12, verse number 9 through 12 says this, don't just pretend to love others. This is the New Living Translation. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our, in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Keep on praying. Prayer is asking God. Prayer is seeking after God. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened unto you. What am I saying? I'm saying pray until you can love your enemies. Let me say it a different way. That you might, be at a, you, you, you might receive a little bit better. Ask until you can forgive others. Ask until you can 
forgive your enemies. Ask until you can love your enemies. Ask until you can forgive. Ask until you can be consistent in your faith. Ask until you can be faithful. Ask until you can be, can be truthful, even with yourself. Warren Wearsby, an author that we have used many times for Bible study, said this, truth without love is brutality. Love without truth is hypocrisy. Truth without love is brutality. Love without truth is hypocrisy. In other words, our actions need to speak louder than our words. The reason why our witness is not as effective as it should be or could be is because our actions aren't speaking as loud as our words. People are not only listening to what you say, but they're also watching what you do. We got to practice what we preach. All of God's people must actively strive to do his will. Faith without works is dead. Roman, Revelations 3 and 15 says this. It says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. The Lord wants us to either be hot or cold, in or out. We got to get out of here. But saints of God, I want you to understand the time for fake Christians is over. We need genuine people of God that love God with their whole heart. And if you love God with your whole heart, you can't help but to love your brother or your sister. You can't help but to treat them with dignity and respect no matter how they treated you. The time for fake Christians is over. We need people to say what they believe and to believe what they say. We need more prayer warriors, not more celebrities. We need more evangelists, not more wishy-washy Christians that only serve God when it's convenient. Not only... Only, not, not only the ones that, that worship him when it's convenient. We, we, hypocrisy is deception. That's what it is. We're fooling ourselves if we're, if we're living one way. We're talking one way and living another way. Hypocrisy is deception. You are lying to others. You are lying to yourself. And you are lying to God. If anybody knows you, it's God. He knows every hair on your head. He knows you even before you even knew yourself. I heard a quote once that said this. said, I'd rather be known in life as an honest sinner than a hypocrite. I said, huh. I don't know who wrote that, but that quote, but I need to go shake their hand. It said, I'd rather be known in life as an honest sinner rather than a hypocrite. Take the log out of your own eye. Take the two by four out of your own eye before you start talking about the speck in somebody else's eye. Clean up your own yard before you start talking about somebody else's. The old song that says, sweep around your own front door. Y'all ever seen that video? <laughs> they had brooms and everything. <laughs> sweep around. <laughs> Before you sweep, but there's, there's, there's truth in that. Before you sweep around mine, all we need to do is be consistent with what we believe and who we are in Christ. Play acting is meant for the stage, not for real life. What we need is people that are committed to the cause of Christ. I'm going to ask that you stand at this time. I'm already done. Practice what you preach. If we practice what we preach, then the sinner will come to Christ. If we practice what we preach, our young people will not be running from the church, they'll be running to the church. If we practice what we preach, there'll be many that will be trying to pack out to get into this place. And the church is all over. Not just, and hypocrisy, I'm not just talking about just specifically to Bible, but, but, uh, but hypocrisy is all over. If we 
practice what we preach as the body of Christ, the people of God, then sinners will not be looking at you with the side eye. When you were talking about John 3.16 on Sunday, and then you were cussing John out on Monday. <laughs> what kind of God do they serve? What kind of salvation is that? We got to practice what we preach. I'm already done. If there's anybody that wants to give your life to the Lord, now is your time to come. Step out in the aisle. If you are not where you need to be, if you're like, you know what? I, I'm not where I should be. There's an old saying that says, I may not be what I should be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. If you look around in here this morning, what you'll see is a whole lot of people that's a work in progress. When I was coming here on the freeway, I saw a bunch of cones set up, blocking a whole aisle, blocking a whole lane. Exit was closed. That's what it is now, but they're working on it. If you allow God to work on you, you might have some caution tape around you right now. You might have some barrels set up around you right now. You might look like a mess right now. But just wait until God gets done with you. Just wait until he finishes. That's why James Cleaver wrote that song says, please, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. God is still working on me. God is still blessing me. God is still keeping me. Please be patient. Pump the brakes. Be patient with me. God's not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. What I'm saying is this. Let the Lord use you. Let the word the Lord begin to work on you. You don't got to wait until you got it all together for God to use you. You don't got to wait until you got it all together before you come and give your life to Christ. God will start right where you are. None of us get to where we need to be in a straight line. There's some ups and downs, some back and forth, some twisty turns, some 360s, some 180s. It takes a whole lot for God to get us where we ought to be. Romans 10 says, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him up from the dead, you shall be saved. If there's anybody that wants to be saved today, now is your time to come. If anybody wants to be baptized in Jesus' name, now is your time to come. We always want to give an opportunity during every service, during every opportunity that we gather together for people, whether you are here in the sanctuary, whether you are online, to come and to give your life to Jesus Christ. I tell you, it is something that is life-changing. I tell you, it is something. You never know where you will end up. When I accepted the Lord on that second row right there, long time ago, I never thought that I would find myself standing here. <laughs> if anything, that was still the last place I wanted to be. And if I'm being honest, some days I still, I don't want to be standing in this spot. <laughs> but guess what? God has placed a call upon my life. And just like God has placed a call upon your life, I'm not saying you're going to end up right here. So don't let that keep, don't let that keep you. Don't let that scare you away. <laughs> but where he leads, 
you follow. You never know where God will lead you and who God will lead you in front of or who God, the company God will lead you into. There's people that you can reach that I will never reach, that no one else can ever reach. But because of your witness, because of your testimony, God can reach them through you. But we got to practice what we preach. Come on, let's pray if there's not anyone. Lord, we thank you. We praise your God for those that are here in the sanctuary. We ask, oh God, that you minister to every mind, minister to every heart. You know our walk with you. Lord God, we come honestly bare before you, naked before you. And we ask, God, that you see every flaw that we have. And Lord God, that you redeem us, that you forgive us, that you deliver us from every ill thought, every ill action, everything that is not of you. We ask, oh God, that you forgive us. You said any man is in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and all things shall become new. Help us to become new creations in Christ. Make us over. Make us over. Make us over. Our minds make us over. Our life make us over. Help us, oh God, to live consistent with the Scripture. Not just on Sundays, not just sometimes, not just when we feel like it, but every day. Help us to live according to your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Somebody asked you, hey, you went to church today. What, the, what were they talking about today? Tell them, sure you're right. <laughs> you keep telling me this. <laughs> Tell them I got to learn to practice what I preach. I'm going to ask the deacons to come at this time. As we prepare, this is first Sunday. Can you believe it's already May? I don't know what's going on with the calendar. <laughs> but 2022 is flying by. That means we got to get busy doing the work that God has called for us to do. The weather is breaking and it's getting warmer outside. There's so much that needs to be done in the body of Christ. So much needs to be done in this community. And not just in this community or here on the hilltop, but all around the city. I don't know how many homicides we've already had so far. But in the summer, whatever that number is, tends to spike. The church needs to stop having church and start being the church. Start being the called out ones. And start going out into the highways and the hedges and compelling people to hear the word of God. That doesn't mean you need to drag them here kicking and screaming in the word of God. You can speak the word of God wherever you are. You just need to hear your pastor know you got the word and you know enough word. You know enough scripture. If you got to say, I don't know where it's found, but <laughs> you can still share the word of God. You can share the love of God with them. And they can give their life to the Lord. Our young people need to hear the word of God. Our seniors need to hear the word of God. Those that are sick in their bodies, ailing, they need to hear the word of God. We're getting ready to partake of Holy Communion. Every first Sunday we do so. And we do so because we want to begin the month the same way that we hope to end the month, which is in communion with the Almighty God. Holy Communion is for baptized believers. We've been baptized in Jesus' name. It is for you. 
1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also delivered I unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke and said this. He said, uh, he said, take and eat this body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We ask so God that you prepare our hearts and our minds as we partake of the body and the blood of the Lord, that you prepare us, O oh God, to receive you unto ourselves, and that we become one with you, that when we study the word of God, O oh God, that the words, O oh God, become one with us, that, Lord God, that the word of God that we hear, Lord God, will become one with us, that, when we, that, we, that we have a thirst, a renewed thirst for the word of God. We thank you and we praise you. Help us to be consistent. Help us to be dependable. Help us to be honest with you and honest with ourselves. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This time the ushers are going to distribute the body and the blood of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for being our Lord. We thank you for being our Savior, our deliverer, our everything. Thank you, oh God, for never giving up on us. Thank you, oh God. Because there were so many times that we're worthy to be cut off, but you still said, 
not so. Jesus. This is not the end. I still have work yet to do. You still have air in your lungs. You still have work to do. Lord God, we thank you for your sacrifice. You said in your word, you were wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace was upon you with your stripes. We're healed. As we partake of Holy Communion, we partake of the body and the blood of the Lord. As we partake of Holy Communion, we ask, O oh God, that you help us, O oh God, to become one with you. Wash away everything that is not of you. Wash away, Lord God, every flaw, every hang up, every affliction. Let healing virtue flow as we partake of Holy Communion. Help us, O oh God, to have a changed minds as we partake of Holy Communion. Renewed hope, renewed strength. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. You said in your word, this is my body which was broken for you. This is my blood which was shed for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let us all commune. this morning. Man, we had a few brief announcements and then we're going to go ahead and dismiss. Offering. Amen. At this time. Offering. Oh, offering. I forgot about offering. Okay, deacons. <laughs> Master deacons to come back. <laughs> Master deacons to come back. We want to get a separate basket for uh, missions. We did not have uh, a collection for missions last Sunday. If we can get some people to hold the basket. 